Hello. Hello, everybody. Rather unusually, we're doing something a bit different today, but it's in our mental health our wellness and addiction and wellness. Well, what's, what's it? Mind, wellness. Wellness and well-being and mindfulness. Mental yeah. health. Mental what health are you and talking well, about? Mental health and well-being. Yeah, well, anyway, so a new little strand in that we were both struck by an article today in the Times. And in fact, it was picked up by all the papers. And LBC. LBC. And in fact, we discussed it on Loose Women today and I oh, was wishing you? that oh. you were there. Right. Um, what we are talking about is a programme that Adrian Childs... Drinkers uh, Like Me. Drinkers Like Me, that's coming up on BBC Two, I think, next Monday, 9pm. Mm. Um, looking into, what would you say, the sort of denial, the denial, how yeah. much alcoholism there is in this country, yeah. and people have no idea, the acceptable face of alcoholism. Well, and also the very middle class face of, of, of a lot of it. I mean, obviously it's middle class as far as Adrian Childs, you know, he's a broadcaster, etc. Um, and, uh, and, and middle aged, the middle class and middle aged. And... Um, you know, there's a very famous phrase they use in rehab, which is, denial ain't a river in Egypt. Mm. I used to kind of get on my nerves when you used because everyone would say it like it was the first time they've, they'd ever said it. But, um, but I do think that we are in a culture of huge cultural denial around, you know, around alcohol and around our alcohol and consumption. He, and he talks very candidly about it. And in fact, he said when he was first asked to do the programme, he didn't think he drank enough to be valid enough. When they count it, he's, he's sometimes drinking 100 units a week. And what, what I liked about the, his interview was he talked about mindless drinking, and I can imagine him saying it because he's, he's got that turn of phrase. Really want. Yeah, he, he doesn't mean mindless as in smashing tables and going nuts. He meant mindless as in just didn't think about it. He wasn't thinking about the fact yeah. that it was. It often makes me think about your thing, which you say about food, which is have some consciousness over eating. And, you know, when I think back to when I used to drink, the amount of drink that would go in without you really thinking, oh, yeah. I'm having a drink. Yeah, and like That's... he said, he can't bear the thought that he may have ruined drinking for himself because of all that needless drink. Mm. Like, if you think about it, usually, say you have a couple of... I, I never really have more than two glasses of wine these days, do no. I, with dinner, with dinner or if we're out It's for amazing lunch. how you've pulled that back from a point yeah. where you used to drink excessively. Excessively, I, mean, I used to drink so much. And that really resonated with me, what he was saying, because I think, think of all that drink that I just had to stay at a party I was already bored with, mm. to sit with somebody that really I just wanted to go home. Oh, then somebody brings out a pile of shots, so I just do them because I want to be rare and everyone else is doing shots, but actually I'm shuddering because they're so disgusting. Yeah. You know, drink, drink. I mean, oh, God knows what damage I've done to my liver because this was a bit of a wake-up call for him, wasn't mm, it? To have mm. this sort of standard test about his liver. And, what, and, and he said it was fine. And that's what I liked about the piece was it reveals, and I'm, sure, I'm looking forward to watching the documentary. I yeah. think we might review it, actually. Yeah. Is that, you know, the standard test tells you nothing. Nothing. Because when you have a more in, in, invasive yeah, well, yeah. A test, it showed that the fibres in his liver were starting to break down and it's, uh, therefore he's well on his way to... Um... Fatty liver. And but when I was in the car this morning reading it, mm. I was really struck by a particular thing he said and then I came home to that and you'd been struck by it. I said, oh God, Mark oh. will love this. Anyway, so read well, it Well, he, he's, it's well known, he's very good friends with Frank Skinner and it's, it's also known that Frank Skinner is a, is a recovering alcoholic him. and an abstainer. And uh, he, he comments on the fact that Frank Skinner told him that he had never been able to replace the white heat of joy he got from alcohol and says that his social life never recovered from stopping drinking. Both those comments, absolutely I relate to. My social life has never recovered since I stopped drinking. It just hasn't. And I still sit here at the foot of, at the foot of a very, very large mountain, never really thinking, if I'm brutally honest, that my social life will ever recover. And that's a source of great sadness. But that really resonated for me. And it's interesting, if when I think about that comment, and then I think about Adrian Child saying, he sees him, saw him. So I just saw myself as a social drinker. It's often said, lots of people say that I was a social drinker. I was an incredibly social drinker. What does that mean? It means you drink with others. Because what he says was he didn't think he had a drinking problem because he didn't drink in the morning and he didn't drink in the afternoon. And he didn't drink till six o'clock. In fact, Linda Robson was talking about that today. She's given up drink now, but only because she gave up sugar for the show. But she was saying every single night she would drink a whole bottle of wine seven nights a week. But because she didn't drink till 10 o'clock at night, she didn't think she had a drinking problem. Mm. Um, he says here, 
because it says here that, that Adrian is really struggling to organise an alcohol-free life. He's not succeeding, even though he's gone through, he's found mm. out all this stuff, he's still drinking, but he tries to have, because the doctor said, even if you're not going to give it up, at least try and have three days mm. in a row without drinking. And he says that he's struggling. I wouldn't know what to do with somebody who didn't go to the pub. Would you go for a walk? You can't drink coffee for four hours, you'd be buzzing. A meal often seems too formal. He's been drinking long, I don't know, yeah. and he goes on. And I think you, again, that resonates with you. It really resonates with me. I'm not going to name names, but I remember going for a drink, well, a meal, actually, with a friend of mine shortly after coming out of rehab. And there was no edge of malice to what he said. But later that night on the way home, I'd not had a drink, obviously, and I'd met him to explain where I'd been. I'd been away for four weeks. 14 da, 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 da. years sober. And he said, it's not the same, is it, Mark? I mean, he didn't say, because no one would, no bloke would. He didn't well, I say, know he was, and I know bloody why he said that, because he's the most boring arse you well, could no, ever meet, and no. you'd have to be drunk to be able to sit with him. How well, no, 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 say that the, to you when you've just come being, out of He didn't say, oh, well, that's the end of our friendship, but it was a clear signal. Another <sighs> friend of mine, I remember saying, God, you're not half as much fun when you haven't got a drink in you. Now, F off. You know, <laughs> I know who you are as well, and you were no bloody fun, because I had to sit listening to you when you were pissed out of your brains. You don't deserve him as your friend, so good riddance. Anyway. For the majority of... of, 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 of the, but here's the problem, here's the problem. The reason denial isn't a river in Egypt, and the reason I think so many social drinkers are... Ain't just a river in Egypt. Oh. You haven't heard it that many times. Uh, and, and the only reason... Sorry, what was I saying just at that point? I completely lost my thread. Uh, That's all right. I'm just saying the reason... You were saying the reason people find it difficult and say it's not as much fun because it highlights their own drinking. Yeah, precisely. There's a vested interest. There's a vested interest for everyone. I know this isn't dramatic. Everyone in the country has a vested interest to not think that they have a problem or that they drink too much. Mm. To admit that you drink too much isn't to say you're an alcoholic. And I've got living proof of that in, in Nadia. I mean, we often talk about the fact that I don't drink. And I, okay, just not drinking is one achievement. Okay, and I'm not underplaying it and I, and I recognise that. But it's one day at a time and who knows, tomorrow I could just open the fridge and get completely blotted and everything would fall apart. The much trickier task is maintaining a relationship with alcohol that means you can have a you know have a little bit of fun you know have a, have a little bit too much fun but it doesn't overwhelm your life and destroy your life and i think that you know the vast you know you the vast majority of people will go through episodes in their life where drinking is more of a problem and less mm. of a problem at different times in their lives due to that circumstances doesn't, actually mean they're an alcoholic. doesn't mean you're an alcoholic but i tell you what one thing i do i do feel is that usually the people who are most vociferous about, oh, I don't believe alcoholism is even a thing, just handle your drink and da da da. They are usually middle class, chattering types who, who are just wanting to justify their own drinking behaviour. There is a vested interest in not facing your own drinking. Every doctor says when they ask someone how much are you drinking, they, they times it. it by two mm. or three. Mm. If I mean, you know, the thing is, there is such a thing as responsible drinking and it doesn't sound sexy and moderate drinking, it doesn't sound sexy. And I'm so glad now that I have that in my, in my life mm. because, you know, it is lovely. It is lovely to have a drink. It's great to have a bit of a giggle, yeah. you know. But as, as Adrian says, if you push it too far and you push it to the point where you can never have it again, that is just a hellish place to be, as you know. So, Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Sorry, the What's television's just come on in the background. I was going to say, is somebody getting married? Choruses. It sounded like the church bells. Choruses. <laughs> um, but the other thing to say as well, in any drinking group, and I would, I would challenge anyone watching this to look at your group of friends when you're next out drinking and work out who in your group do you think drinks more than you? And I would guarantee that for everyone in that group, there's someone else in that group who's, a, who's got more of a problem with drink or perhaps drinks a little bit too much more often than the other person. And that is an important barometer for most drinkers to continue drinking because you're, there's always someone you're never as bad as. And I was one of those people who was always the person invited to every single night of every single event because Jesus Christ, no one can drink as much as him and no one can keep going as much as him. So I was forever the barometer of... Uh, of, um, you know, of, of extreme drinking. Excuse me, I'm just turning that off. So, do you know what I mean? Do you find yeah. that? Did you find, yeah. do you ever yeah, find? Yeah, I think you can. I think, I think it's really important. I really want to say, because whenever we do anything about drinking, people, there's always comments with people saying, why do I drink when Mark doesn't drink? But Mark is totally fine I with am. me drinking. I am. She if hasn't got my hand in a vice. ever said to me, if he'd ever said to me, listen, 
you you having a drink ever with me around is just hell. Of course I wouldn't drink, but he actually, you actually say the opposite, don't you? You say you don't want people to just be I would hate changing that. their whole life to fit in with it. And you know, you can live with somebody that doesn't drink and, and drink, it, it is possible. I have no temptation with the actual alcohol. Um, it, you know, and also, uh, you know, I, I, I like the conviviality of a dr of people drinking. I, you know, there does obviously it crosses a line. I could never walk into a pub with a bunch of very drunk, rowdy footballers. But why you know. should you? Why would anyone? But why really? would anyone exactly? And actually, half the people who are in there wouldn't Odd. want to be there themselves and unless they were absolutely drinking. annihilated drunk. So you know, ask yourself how many situations do you drink in order to get through the situation? Hmm. That's some, another note that I, I thought was good that you made. You know, consciousness around drinking. You know, how many social occasions? What that heat of joy that Frank Skinner talks about? That heat of joy is you know. From from everything, from from the baptism of a child to the birth of a child to a wedding, everything everything revolves around alcohol. And you know, I don't want to be one of those people who doesn't drink on the edge, going, "Oh, that's a really bad thing." I don't think everyone is an alcoholic, but I genuinely think everyone at some point has a problem with their drinking, and it's always worth looking at. Don't you? I'm not one of those people who says everyone's an alcoholic. I do think everyone is addicted everyone, to something. I just think everyone has to be mindful. You know, if if you. For instance, you know, if you have drunk too much the night before, don't drink the next day. Yeah. I mean, people don't let the liver recover, that's the thing, and the liver is such a precious thing. And I mean, that's certainly what this doctor was saying to him, you know, you've got to have these three days on the trot, mm. but you don't have one. And he's really struggling with that. Um, There's nothing yeah. more toe-curlingly awful than the prospect of having to go somewhere socially as a man with other men with all of the bravura that goes with drinking. It doesn't have to even be being talked so about. It doesn't have to even be being talked about. The first thing that happens with a group of men is who's, who's first round, who's getting the first round in? And in that first round, nothing that's said is said in what that first round denotes and means. And if you come back with a Diet Coke, it's not easy. It yeah. really is And I really feel easy. for Adrian that because he's a big football fan, yeah. you know. And, you know, he talks about his anxiety and his depression and waking up in the middle of the night with anxiety. Well, blimey, you know, 37 units, you know, that's not... Yeah. That's self-medicating anxiety and depression, isn't it? And the thing is... And he's it's on It's only going to make it worse, that's yeah, for sure. exactly. So, have a drink now and again. Enjoy it, but don't overdo it so you have to end up like him where you can't yeah. ever have one and again. believe me, <laughs> as a recovering alcoholic who will not, who was day one day at a time never going to pick up a drink again, I so wish I hadn't ruined drinking for myself. Yeah. I say to all my girls, I don't want you to not drink, although of course I have massive concerns as the father of four daughters. But I do, do want them to drink responsibly and drink in a way that means they can have some fun with it. Yeah. So there you go. There you go. We'll review the show. It's on next Monday, 9pm. We'll did you know that the denial is a river in I Egypt? I know. Yeah. Crazy. Apparently.